Today's show is sponsored by Indie Film Hustle's Filmmaker Process. We provide filmmakers with professional services to get their films or series funded, finished, and distributed. For more information, go to filmmakerprocess.com. I mean, I've been a fan of yours for a long time and with your filmography, but I saw you on a DVD of Uh-oh. this this li- this little known amazing acting directing the actors course called N- the Nina Foch court the course ah can and, and and i saw you there and I, and and of course george lucas was in there there's like a ton of amazing directors who nina um really helped and i when i first launched the new film hustle i was a probably one of the biggest sellers of her course as oh, really? i sold tons and t- cuz i took it i'm like no i got to promote this to to mm. my audience and I love that course, but you actually, I took the, the, the video course, you right. actually took her course, right? Yeah. How was that? I mean, there are a few people that mark you. I mean, I was lucky enough to have several good teachers in high school and certainly one or two in college, but she she just was so radical. I mean, uh, you know, I have I know a little bit about Brando's life and, and, and Kazan's life and, and, and what, who Stella Adler was. Mm-hmm. And, and and what effect she had on people and um and and Sandy Meisner and and Nina was a student of theirs and she took their gospel and apply and and then really translated into her own uh, understanding because she too had had a more Hollywood experience she had been a contract player mm-hmm. for Louis Mayer in the in the 40s and and she had then been uh she worked with uh George Stevens and William Wyler as didn't a she, coach of, of she actor. Work, yeah, didn't she work with Kubrick and I think Cecil Me DeMille at this, I think something I don't, I, know about, I don't know about DeMille. She used to tell a DeMille story. She had the best stories of anybody. <laughs> um but she was also unbelievably tough. Yeah. She was unsparing about uh what the calling was of directing uh and not just directing the actor, but 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 storytelling. And you know, the funny thing when you have a great teacher, pay attention. You don't always get it right away. Mm-hmm. What happens right. is that, at least for me, a year later or five years later, you'll find yourself in some situation, and then something will happen, and then you'll say, "Oh, that's what she meant." And then a whole reservoir of things that will still have been in you will then be available to you because nothing really leaves if you're paying attention. It's there. Mm -hmm. It can be called upon. And I think for me that I just needed to have some sort of practical application of doing a thing for it to then be somehow internalized. But once I had done it and even done it badly, and I maintain as good a teacher as doing it well, mm-hmm. um, I was able then to reference what she was talking about and all the things that she talked about in terms of how one elicits a performance from an actor, how one uses behavior, how one really breaks down a script. Uh, it became something that I then took in and applied some of whatever my own experience had then been to try to make it my own. But, but she was, um, she was really formidable <laughs> and, and, believed, and believed in it as a calling or believed in it as a, um, you know, the, like the a role. priesthood, almost like a priesthood. Yeah, I was, was going to go there. And I thought at least you said the pretentious part about it. Yes, I think that's true. <laughs> I, no, I and I, and she was. I mean, she was a formidable in the in the DVD or in the video course that I saw. I could only imagine being in the room with her. Um, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. It really was. She she was remarkable. Yeah, now she would really she would really take you apart. Uh, <laughs> she had actually they, they they created something at AFI called the narrative workshop, mm-hmm. where you would show something that you had shot. We all worked on tape at that time and shot it single camera as if it were film. Broke, cut it ourselves, and. Uh, the, the the exercise was like a communist Chinese self criticism session, where you have to show the film to your peers, and you're not allowed to speak, and they just tell you what they've seen. Oh, 
and you have to sit there and fucking take it. <laughs> You know, and then and then you do some kind of that that repentance thing that, you know, the Chinese, uh, I am guilty of the sin of pace. I am guilty of the sin of indulgence. <laughs> of, uh, sort of session that must have that must have been amazing to watch the rest of this interview. Head over to IndieFilmHustle.com.